On today's lesson, I'm going to show you guys some of my favorite tricks to get some spooky sounds out of this popular scale. Later, kids, it's your good buddy, Uncle Ben. Ah yes, the good old harmonic minor scale. The favorite choice of every frilly shirted neoclassical shredder as well as everybody wanting to add something a little spooky into their playing. But Uncle Ben, it's just a scale. How do I get spooky with it? Well, Junior, that's exactly what we're gonna explore in this lesson. As always, you guys can find full tabs and charts for this lesson over on my Instagram page at Ben Elder Guitars. Just search for hashtag Weekend Workshop 252 Find everything and start shredding along with me. Downloadable tabs, charts, backing tracks, bonus lessons, and all kinds of other great stuff are available to everybody who supports my channel over on patreon.com slash Guitars. Let's go for now. Yeah, for this lesson, I'm gonna be using A as the root note for this scale. But you can move all of this information you're about to learn to any other key center too and use like, you know, F harmonic minor or whatever. But just for ease and, you know, applicability, we're gonna be using A for our root note here today. Now, first things first, let's ask ourselves, what is a harmonic minor scale and what makes it different from a minor scale? Well, the good old fashioned traditional A minor scale would go something like this. That's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. And more importantly, if you were to look at the intervals that that scale generates, it's root, second, flat third, fourth, fifth, flat sixth, flat seventh, and root. I point out those intervals because I really think that in order to understand any scale or any musical concept in its entirety, it's very important to learn those intervals and understand those. It's gonna be way more relevant than just learning what notes are in that scale, because that's gonna change every time you change keys or whatever. But if you learn those intervals, one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, one, that's gonna apply to every single key you'll ever put stuff in. So do pay close attention to your intervallic stuff going on here. Now the harmonic minor scale is only different by one note. It goes like this. A, B, C, D, E, F, and then instead of the G that we had earlier, the flat seven interval, we're gonna have a G sharp, or regular or major seven interval, some people would call that, before you get back to the root note of A. So it's only one note different. But you'll notice how that puts a note right behind your root. You see how the root note right here was A, and how we had that note a half step behind it, our new, you know, I'm gonna call it harmonic minor note, the G sharp note, the natural seventh. Gives you a note right behind your root, which is something that a minor scale typically lacks. Now this goes for every single root that you ever encounter in the scale. So you know how you have this root note that you start on? Well, guess what you have right behind it? That spooky G sharp note again. So for every time that you have a root note in the scale, you're gonna have that harmonic minor note. Again, that's not a real term, that's just what I call it, right behind the root. That might not seem like much just to change one note in that scale, but it really changes everything in terms of the harmony of the scale, as well as what all uh, chords and arpeggios you have to choose from. And that's what we're gonna explore today. It's more than just learning a new scale shape, it's about learning what you can do with what it produces. So one of the first things that makes this unique by adding in that major seven interval into our scale is that it gives this scale a total of three half steps, okay? You have a half step between B and C, or the second flat third. You have a half step between E and F, or the fifth and flat sixth. And you also have a half step between the seventh and one intervals right there, the G sharp and the A. Now, most other scales and modes only have two half steps in them, you know? If you look at your major scale, it has two half steps in it. If you look at your regular minor scale that we started with today, two half steps, and the rest of it is all whole step intervals. By adding in this extra set of half steps, it really changes the tonality of the scale into something that we don't really recognize as sounding, you know, diatonic and major and happy. It sounds a little 
a little twisted and different to our ears because of that extra half step interval. This additional half step makes things get really interesting too when you start looking at the kind of chords that you can form out of the harmonic minor scale. So your regular minor scale forms a lot of normal things, some major chords and minor chords and stuff like that. But this one screwed up note really opens up a lot of possibilities that your favorite guitar players and film score composers and stuff have been using for decades to get some really creepy tones out of the scale. Okay, so once again, the notes in this scale are A, B, C, D, E, F, G sharp, and our root note again, A. Whenever you learn a new scale, like this A harmonic minor scale here, I want you guys to start thinking about it as being somewhat like a, a harmonic pantry that you can make stuff out of, you know? Just like whenever you're in the kitchen, you have access to all the ingredients and everything that you have in your pantry and you can mix them together however you want to, sometimes for you know good or bad results. The same is true of any scale. So that means that I can use all of these notes right here, A, B, C, D, E, F, G sharp, and A, to construct chords and arpeggios. Now the usual method of taking a scale and harmonizing it into a bunch of chords or arpeggios is to start off on a note, like let's say a root note A, and we use what I call the leapfrog method. What I mean by that is you just start off on a note, jump over the next note in the scale, so see I skipped over the B note, that puts me here on C, and then you play leapfrog again, and that gets you here to the E note. That forms that note's basic chord triad, A, C, and E, which is a root, flat third, and fifth, which is a regular A minor chord. That's the same thing that the uh, regular minor scale would yield too. If you just had A, B, C, D, E, F, G, the regular minor scale, it would also yield just a regular old A minor chord. And there are indeed some other ones that are pretty similar throughout those two scales. Like if you start off on D and leapfrog your way through that, you get D, F, and A, which is just a regular garden variety D minor chord. Nothing too special about that. So again, I've just made a regular A minor chord here off the A note and a regular D minor chord here off the D note. That's all pretty ordinary stuff, but whenever we start making chords that involve this new peculiar natural seven, our G sharp note here, that's when things get interesting and you start getting into some possibilities that you didn't have when you played the regular minor scale. Let's take for example the chord or arpeggio that would get formed off of the fifth here. A, B, C, D, E. There's the fifth note of the scale. Now, if you take that note right there and leapfrog it up, well, first thing that's gonna happen here is you're gonna go from E to G sharp. That is A major third interval, which is one of the uh, defining traits of a major chord. If you played leapfrog again, you'd go all the way around the world here onto the B note. Now, that gives us E, G sharp, and B. That's an E major chord right there. And that is something that does not happen if you're using the regular minor scale. Regular minor scale would have a G note. You'd have E, G, B, which is an E minor triad. Now, this inclusion of this major chord that happens on the five of this scale is one of the things that makes harmonic minor so damn cool. And you've heard this all over the place. This quality of generating a minor chord on the one, a minor chord on the four, and a major chord on the five is something that you've heard all over soundtracks and like Scooby-Doo and Disney cartoons and stuff like that your whole life. It's got a really defined sound to it that you can only get if you're using this scale. The fact that your E major chord contains that newfangled G sharp note in it makes it all the more appealing whenever the chord resolves back to the one, the A minor. Because you're essentially hearing this leading voice of the G sharp of the E chord going to the A of the A minor chord. It's a really classic, appealing sound to hear. Now the trick I just showed you guys a second ago where we start off on a note and play leapfrog twice, that's basic triadic harmony. That's how we form three note chords out of every note in a scale. But what happens if you keep playing leapfrog past that? And the answer is, is more complex harmony and chord types. This is where you start forming seven chords. And one really interesting thing starts happening right out of the gate here. If you start off on A, play leapfrog to your C note, play leapfrog to your E note, that's our regular A minor chord like we had a second ago. But then if you play leapfrog again and add in this G sharp note, that ends up giving us something really interesting here. 
These three notes right here represent a minor triad, uh, which is root, flat third, and fifth. But this G sharp note here that we added in, in relation to A, is a seven. Remember how we talked about how the harmonic minor scale has a, a major seven or natural seven in it? And this is a really interesting thing. You have a minor triad that has a major seven in it, and that is one of the spookiest sounds that you can use in your chord and arpeggio playing. Check it out. It's like a minor chord that really wants to resolve, because you got all this minor triad stuff here, A, C, E, but then this G sharp note. It's like looking at a crooked picture that you just want to straighten out. You want to hear this G sharp note become A. But by leaving it unresolved, you get some really cool sounds. You guys have heard the faceless and alluvial use these chord types all over their music and just kind of like random haphazard ways that sound really cool and spooky. And again, that is called a minor major seven chord, which is just a special attribute of the harmonic minor scale. And again, the formula for that is root, flat third, fifth, and seventh. It's a minor chord with a major seventh. Another good way to look at it is it's just like a minor triad and then add in the note a half step behind the root. Okay, so let's think about that for a second. Let's say I had like an A minor arpeggio. 12A, 10D, 9G, 10B, 8 high E, 12 high E, okay? Root, flat third, fifth, root, flat third, fifth. Again, think intervals, it's way more important than notes or frets. So basically anywhere in this arpeggio that I have the root note, so in other words like the first note right here, the A, I could add in that major seven, that G sharp note, and I can find it really easily just by knowing it's always right behind the root. Okay, so listen to this. Really cool, really haunting sound. Again, what I played right there is seven, root, flat third, fifth. Seven, root, flat third, fifth, seven. I can find that seven up here because I know that this note is A, our root note, so that seventh must be right behind it. Oh, Michael Keen is keen on those. Here's another really cool thing that happens here on the fifth degree of the scale, the E note in this case. Now you guys remember earlier in the lesson we talked about how it can go E, leapfrog G sharp, leapfrog around the world here to B, and that formed a major chord there on that five, which gave it that cool Scooby-Doo sound. Now again, if we continue harmonizing this, we get more cool stuff. Okay, the B note right here, it can harmonize with this D note. Now, we end up now with this sum total of notes that's E, G sharp, that kind of looks like an E, doesn't it? E, G sharp, B, D. Now, if you're intervallically hit, you'll know that that's root, third, fifth, and flat seven, which spells out a dominant chord. A lot of us know the dominant chords as, you know, the Beatles chords. They just have that funky, kind of friendly sound to them. Uh, but they can also strengthen that resolve that we talked about earlier in a one, four, five, how you have. That sounds good, but listen when you play E7 instead. forms an even stronger resolve back to the one chord of A minor, which is neat. But let's keep going with this harmony game. Okay, we played E, G sharp, B, D, but if I leapfrog from D, what do I get? F. Okay, you'll notice how this note that we just landed on is right next door to the root note of this scale. That's an interval that we call a flat nine interval, okay? And basically whenever we add that in, we end up with something that we would call a dominant flat nine chord. So it's just like your friendly old E7 chord, only you also get to play the note a half step in front of the root, which yields some really cool dissonant sounds. That dominant flat nine sound, 
is an even more effective way to resolve back to A minor. It's kind of like in the order of tension, it would go E major to A minor, E7 to A minor, or E7 flat 9 to A minor. That's like the most tense sound that you can get. And you have all this great dissonant stuff in there, especially that half step between the root note E and the flat 9 to F yield some really, really, really cool sounds. Also some really cool arpeggio stuff too. Because if you know an E dominant arpeggio like this, that's 7A, 6D, 9D, 7G, 9G, that's root, third, fifth, flat seventh root. Again, anywhere you know the root is, those two spots. You can add in that flat nine interval for really cool like Django Reinhardt gypsy kind of sound. Again, listen under E how that would sound. Really cool flamenco kind of sound. That's actually a tonality that my, my good buddy Emil Wurstler of the project Verlorener as well as Chimera and Doff and all that stuff turned me on to a really long time ago. Very cool sound, and again, great to effectively resolve back to your A minor. Or just hang out in that cool gypsy land for a while. That's sick too. Now, another really cool thing happens here on that flat six degree of the A harmonic minor scale, the one that would harmonize with the F note. Now, if you do just kind of the normal, you know, triadic harmony, you can end up with something fairly mundane. F, A, again, same as that A, around the world here to C. F, A, C, that's just a regular, good old fashioned F major chord. Now that is cool because what that gives you is an E major chord and an F major chord, two major chords that are like right next to each other, which a lot of you guys will recognize as kind of the heart of that flamenco kind of sound. That's not something that happens in the regular minor scale. So it's kind of cool that you can have this E major and F major right next to each other. There's another really cool thing that can happen with one little tweak. Okay, so the usual thing that happens is F harmonizes with A, harmonizes with C, gives us our F major chord, right? But a really cool thing happens if instead of using A, what if I used our unique little, you know, harmonic minor note right here, this G sharp note in this case, F, G sharp, and then that would go around the world here to C if you're playing the leapfrog game. Now technically that would be an A flat note if you were to get really fancy schmancy about it. Don't worry about that for now. What you need to know is that effectively spells out an F minor chord, F, A flat, C. That's an F minor chord. And this is something that's really cool if you use it in conjunction with the A minor chord that's formed here on the first note or the D minor chord that's formed right here. You get some really awesome sounds out of this. And you guys know this because it's been all over every Danny Elfman film score for all time, okay? Using a minor chord right here on the root, using a minor chord right here on the flat six. It's an extremely identifiable sound that I know you know. see somebody in the comments asking what Danny Elfman score that was. The better question is which one isn't it? Because that's one of those that he uses all the freaking time. A minor chord right here, a minor chord right here, instant Elfman. It's also going to give you some instant black metal. Grim and frostbitten. And again, whenever you make those A minor and F minor chords into arpeggios, you're gonna end up with some familiar sounds that you've once again heard the faceless use. Like this, I'm just gonna be using the A minor arpeggio and the F minor arpeggio. And again, if you look at the scale here using that note pantry concept I talked about a second ago, you can do other fun stuff with this F chord here as well. Check it out, if you can do F, that G sharp, our magic harmonic minor note, G sharp, A flat, whatever you want to call it. C, okay, that's our F minor chord that we were using a second ago. But check this out. This E is in the pantry, right? That's that major seven interval. Remember when we talked about taking that A minor right there and making A, C, E, G sharp, adding in that major seven note to make a minor major seven chord? 
Same thing can happen right here. You can take that F note, grab that note, that note, and the one right behind it, and form another one of those minor major seven chords for ultimate sorrow and hostility. So there's one more really cool chord and arpeggio thing I want to show you guys about the harmonic minor scale that happens whenever we harmonize kind of the new kid in class right here, this G-sharp note. So far I've showed you guys how that note can wreak havoc when it interacts with some of the other harmonies of these chords, like that A minor major 7 and stuff like that. But what if we start off on that note and harmonize it? What happened? Okay, G-sharp. Again, i got to go around the world here to leapfrog over to B. Then I'm going to leapfrog over this to get my D note. So far this has yielded G-sharp, B, and D. Okay, sounds like this. G sharp, B, D. That's your big trouble diminished chord sound right there. But a really cool thing happens if I leapfrog again from this D note and go to F, okay? G sharp, B, D, F. That spells out something very important and very unique to this scale. It's a full diminished chord, and you only get it whenever you use this scale. A full diminished chord is nothing but stacked up minor thirds. Let me show you what I mean. A minor third is a three fret gap going across a single string. So if you start off on G sharp, again our magic harmonic minor note, go up three frets, there's your B note, go up three frets, there's your D note, go up three frets, there's your F note, go up three frets, and you're back where you started again at G sharp. Again, it's a simple rule of threes, and these are really easy to visualize on the guitar, like this. Here's a longer form of that same arpeggio. minor third, minor third, minor third combination gives us a diminished seven chord, sometimes called a full diminished chord. And these are like the Mac Daddy of evil sounding chords. This is what you've heard every time like in a silent film, there's like, you know, the curly mustachioed villain tying a woman to the train tracks. It's that sound. That full minor third highway that happens when you harmonize the seventh note of the scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and just keep going up minor thirds, is something really unique to the harmonic minor scale. It's part of the reason why us and Ingve and everybody else loves it so much, because it gives us access to those really cool full diminished chords that happen on the G sharp. Now the cool thing is, is that that full diminished sound doesn't just happen on G sharp, okay? It opens up this highway of minor thirds that goes through the scale. Check it out. G sharp to B, to D, to F, right? Okay, G sharp, B, D, F. Those B, D, or F notes that I encountered along the way are perfect points to start this minor third highway. So you could be playing through this scale, and once you reach any G sharp, B, D, or F note in the scale, start scaling up your minor thirds or down your minor thirds. It doesn't really matter. Either way is fine, as long as you're starting off on one of those notes. Check this out. Here's my D note I landed on. Again, that's one of our magical highway notes. And again, watch what happens if I just keep going up minor thirds. And we're down. Sounds great. I could do that from the B note. There's my B note. I could also do that from the F note if I wanted. There's F. Any of those notes becomes fertile ground for diminished chord domination, and it only happens whenever you're using our good old friend, the harmonic minor scale. Well guys, I hope that gives you all some cool ideas of stuff that you can do to make your tunes a little bit more spooky this Halloween season. This lesson was a little bit less beginner friendly than my normal you know, theory lessons tend to be, 
But hopefully you guys are cool with that. Let me know in the comment section below if this is something that you'd like to see more of. You know, taking a scale, forming harmonies and arpeggios and stuff like that out of it in order to make bold and adventurous new sounds. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring the bell for notifications every time I put up another slice of fried gold right here on my channel. If you guys like what you see here and want to show some support, be sure to visit my Patreon page over at patreon.com slash benellerguitars. Well guys, it's been a ton of fun as always, but it's time to get away from the computer and go practice some guitar. Let's click it. More picking.